Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Nathan Hamilton, NATO Hambone, and this is the Great Chaos Podcast. And sitting across from me today, we have... Sean Duke. And over beside of him, sketching on the pad, as always, we have... Jesse James. Jesse James. All right. Well, gentlemen, um, I've heard some very, very strange stories in the news concerning medical, you know, uh, me- you know, in medicine, you know, medical practice. I've heard, you know, people, you know, having weird things happen to them, you know, things left inside of them after surgery and all this. I've, I've even heard about a kid... Uh, the, 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 he went to a hospital, and he had surgery done. And when they sewed him up, and they did an x-ray later, they found out that there was a dead rat inside of him. A rat had f- crawled into him while the doctors were not looking, and they sewed the rat up while, he w- while it was inside, and it died. We're talking like rat, rat, like sewer rat here. Like or? a rat, like like a rat, like it, like it was a, it was a, it was a brown one. It was a little, it was a medium sized rat, from what I've heard. You know, the kid was like nine, ten years old, and you know, uh, he didn't notice it because you know it was in, it was behind his intestines, and he didn't really notice it. Uh, but you know, eventually he complained that he had some stomach pain, and you know, he had a little bit of pain in his stomach region, and they did an X ray, and they found it. They found it right there. I was just like, "What?" It's a rat instead of it's a stomach. rat. That's just that's just like I heard about this guy who had a uh, who had like a uh, uh, he had a speed uh, you know like a a, uh, a harpoon gun had the harpoon go through his head right here right above the eyebrow and come out the back and he and he walked to the hospital with a with a harpoon in his head. I've seen that one before. Like I've read about that because the harpoon in the head—they said if they actually would remove it, that he would have, you know, died instantly, instantaneously. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, I know what you're talking about there. That's crazy. Um, <clears throat> I was listening to another podcast a couple of weeks ago, and there was a woman who was bit by a spider while playing golf, uh, actually on the green. Oh Lord! Who could have? Who could have like died like instantaneously if they wouldn't have got her to medical help? If they would have paid more attention to what it was. Oh man! So those are, you know, <laughs> this is definitely not going right. <laughs> well, I was trying to look something else up too. I, um, well, that's why I have my phone up. Really, I've I've heard a lot. I've heard a lot of different things. Like I've heard a guy, he got shot in the heart. The bullet hit his heart, and he was bleeding out. He plugged the hole up with his thumb and just went walking about, and just and just walked to the hospital. All right, uh, Sean's kind of <laughs> puzzled right now. I just kind of handed him my <laughs> tablet, and this really cracks me up. So apparently, this New York couple wanted kids, and uh, they used the wrong sperm. Oh, not only did they use the wrong sperm. But um, let's uh, uh, let me rephrase this. Uh, scratch what I just said. Rewind. Uh, okay, starting now. So I just showed Sean a tablet here. Yeah, and uh, he's kind of puzzled because I was looking at this thing and it makes me laugh. There's this picture right of this white couple with two black girls, and I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it. I'm like, what? You know, they're adopted. No, they use the wrong donor. Oh, gosh. They use the wrong donor. <laughs> and this is a New York couple up in this, you know, New York City and whatnot. And yeah, um, they got two beautiful black girls. That isn't technically the what they expected. Oh, Lord. Could you imagine being a, that father on the other end receiving those two kids? Oh, gosh. To see. <laughs> <laughs> I said that what I was baffled. Well, I mean, you have to kind of want them anyway. That's the thing. You 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 have all your life. You want children, and then you know, you kind of have to accept what you get in that yeah. that stand. Well, I'm so, not saying that, but I, I know. Just... But that's <laughs> <laughs> one I'm actually reading about here is, is a 67 year old woman who's admitted for a teaching hospital for an, an anagraphy. Um, while she was there, they underwent an, an invasive cardiac. Something to do with her heart. Uh, to beat it all, the thing about it is, is she didn't even need it. 
It, it says here, it's talking about um, an open heart invasive procedure on the wrong patient. Oh, man. So you go to a school <laughs> for these people who are trying to learn how to do stuff, but they do it on the wrong person, on somebody who doesn't even need it. Oh, Lord. And there was things on there about people who have amputated the wrong leg. Ah. Oh. <laughs> It's like it's like oh we amputated the wrong leg let us get the other one <laughs> oh better whoopsie we fixed you yeah uh, oh gosh I I read this earlier I read this earlier this week um, there was a woman who was pregnant for over thirty years uh, get this get this she had a miscarriage but she was not aware that she was pregnant. She had a a a feet a, a baby inside of her. It was it it had died and it had cal her body had calcified it. Zombie baby. And it oh gosh! Every time someone says that, I always remember that scene from that from the new Dawn of the the remake of Dawn of the Dead where the baby wakes up and just goes, <laughs> ah, boom. Yeah, I was just like, oh man. There's that one, and then there's the other one. I think it's, it was in Dead Alive or whatever, where the baby was. Oh yeah, the psycho the baby. It's like, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I remember that little son of a gun. He was n he was a naughty boy. But anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, but anyway, she found this baby inside of. They found they went in. You know, because, you know, they had a, she had a mass right here, and, you know, she was afraid, you know, she might have, you know, it might be a cancerous build. Turns out it was a fetus that had been stuck there for 30 years. That's why she was unable to get pregnant. And, uh-oh, the pad of doom has revealed itself again, and Sean is Sean staring take this quite over. intently at it. Sean, what are your thoughts of what you are looking at? Should I really be reading this? <laughs> he is he, he 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 is having second thoughts. Uh oh. What do we have? So this guy goes in for some sort of surgery and the doctor actually snips off his uh favorite uh, appendix. Oh no. Appendage. Appendage. There we go. Appendage. Yeah, I was about to say the appendix there, is kinda yeah. useless. Yeah. If they took my appendix, I'd be like, oh, okay. Yeah, well they took his appendage. His favorite oh, appendage. And, oh, gosh. Uh, apparently, he was so frustrated and ticked, he kept on chopping. It says here, not only did they slice off the male organ, but proceeded to chop into small pieces in front of a stunned nerfing staff. Uh, his staff uh, said the doctor had been under stress and lost his temper when he accidentally cut the patient's uh, urinary uh, channel. So not uh, only did he cut the urinary channel, he went in and cut the penis off. Oh! Uh, and then slice it into smaller pieces. Uh, now, the thing that's strange about this, though, is they've uh, taken a picture, not not of the gentleman's oh, organ, no. but it's of a quaint-looking barbecue sandwich or, like, sausage under it, and then they've done something wrapped in bacon that looks like a phallic symbol with it. Oh. And that's what's even worse. The fact that it's wrapped in bacon <laughs> looks like <laughs> it's been chopped oh up. Gosh. And put back oh, <laughs> gosh. Turn that away, man. That Turn that so away. Horrible. Whoa, it made man. You smile in a bad way. <laughs> oh, no, my doesn't. gosh. He's still uh. making me smile at all. That's why uh. you're smiling real big. You're this laughing. is why I don't go to the doctor. <laughs> I go to the doctor only when necessary. <laughs> I end up going to the dentist a lot, but I don't go to the I'll tell you <laughs> what, if I go to the doctor and I have to get something amputated, I'm going to make sure I write all over it. Amputate <laughs> this one. This one. <laughs> Pain ends here. <laughs> Pain ends here. Amputate, then be done with it. I'm here with stupid. <laughs> I'm here. Leave I'm here. Me. <laughs> or you can just have a shirt that's pointing at the appendage that's not working. Just be like, this one doesn't work. <laughs> Fix <Broke> it. <laughs> oh, Lord. I need you to rejuvenate my spencer valve. Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> Shoot. Oh, Lord. But Bob, there's a shortage in blinker fluid. <laughs> 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 oh, Lord. Well, now that we've covered some of the most odd things that you could probably read on the internet, of course, there's probably a lot more that you could actually go into, too, but we're not going to go into a whole lot because, A, we don't have a lot of time on this podcast, and B, I don't want to gross you out I, anymore. I, I don't think have. I have the stomach for some of the stuff <laughs> I've seen on the internet. But that's for, like, odd, weird stuff that we could read. Ugh. 
you know so maybe we should go into some strange things that have happened to us yeah. physically and or members of family yeah okay okay Jesse you're smiling awful big you want to start this out or would you rather someone else do it? All right, I'll I rather think, somebody I think else he's go gonna pass. It. Pass. <laughs> uh, okay, I guess maybe I'll go first. Um. Well, one thing that happened to me. Get this. I was a kid. I was I was about three or four years old, and I was walking around my grandmother's front yard. My grandmother was uh was in the front yard, and she had this new oil candle that she was trying to light up. Mm-hmm. She had she had the oil candle she was trying to light up and everything. And me, I was walking around outside barefooted. You know, I was a kid. I was walking around in the grass, climbing up the tree, you know, hanging off the limb, you know, hanging upside down and all that like a stupid kid. And all of a sudden, my grandmother tries keeps trying to light the oil candle and she lights it one time and it looks like it's all okay. Me, I'm walking right beside my grandmother and then all of a sudden the oil candle explodes. <laughs> everywhere? <laughs> uh, oh, it doesn't just go everywhere. It goes all over my right leg and foot. So is this like scalding material? or It's it's burning oil, dude. It's, is it going? Huh? It's like flame shooting through the air at your leg? It's more like napalm. Flame on! It's flame more, on! Oh, yeah. That, yeah, <laughs> go on. Dude, I swear... I I don't remember much from that time of my life, but I do remember that in an agonizing fashion. I remember when that thing exploded, I remember just searing pain and looking at my leg on fire and seeing this and seeing and seeing it burn. And then my grandmother picked me up and ran me over to the water spigot and poured wa- and poured cold ice cold water on it. And and I was just crying my eyes out. My grandfather, who's handicapped, was out on the porch. He rolls back inside and and goes and gets the phone and dials nine one one. It's almost a wonder you didn't go into shock because of the extreme heat to cold situation. I know, there. I know, I know. I, and well, my well, my grandfather he rolled inside. He, I I assume he's the one who called the police be, or called the ambulance because me I was uh, my grandmother was out there with me the entire time along with my sister. And anyway, um. I just remember, you know, the ambulance coming up, them putting me on a gurney, and, you know, them asking me all these questions like, what's your name, what's your name, and I'm telling them my name and all this, you know, how old I am and all this, and they're trying to calm me down, Mm -hmm. and then next thing you know, everything goes blank, and then I wake up in a hospital bed, my foot is elevated above above me, and it's wrapped in bandages, and the bandages are, are, (laughs) are spattered with, you know, there's little spatters of blood on, yeah and me i was just and me i was just looking at it. turns out i had second and third degree burns all over my leg and foot mm. and it was and as a matter of fact it was so bad they had to cut off some of the pieces of skin in between my toes because it burned so bad it's very interesting and that that's probably the worst injury i've well other than my knee playing football i've ever i've ever really had mm. uh that's the one that sticks out the most because just the searing pain, just the just gosh. I can't really, you know, I don't really have a a, a major injury to, to speak of. I've only had like one injury in my life physically, um, well, one that, that I had to go to the doctor for. Um, <clears throat> I was actually standing on top of a cinder block, rocking back and forth, while my dad was working on a vehicle, and I fell off of it and bit my arm up under my weight as I came down and broke my left wrist. Mm. So that's the only major like medical injury I've had to go to the doctor for. Um, I do know one day um, I was at a local arcade back in my hometown, and we called somebody out in front that we knew, and we were trying to catch a ride with them in the back of his pickup truck. Oh, Lord. Well, before... He could, like, you know, before I could get into the back of the truck fully, and or maybe I told him to go on anyway as I was climbing in, he pulls out while I'm still holding on to the top of the tailgate with my feet on the bumper. Next thing I know, like, my feet are dragging, and I hit my chin on the bumper going down and let go as he's pulling me. Oh, Lord. So you think I have a beard now? I had a full-on purple bruised beard. Oh man! At that point in time, for probably a good month. Oh Lord, man! <laughs> Phew. 
so those are some odd stupid things i've done um i talked about this earlier i swallowed a worry stone one day to go ahead and tell you how dated this is we were, oh, i was no. getting up to do i was getting up to take a video out of the vcr and put it into a rewinder yeah and because you're not supposed to rewind with the vcr you have to rewind with the rewinder you know yeah yeah and i suck on weird things sometimes that are like smooth and inanimate and I just swallowed it. <laughs> oh no. It goes smoothly down. <laughs> it did actually. It was like um, it was it was like it was like a slippery pill. <laughs> I had, had an X ray done on that and uh, the last time I saw it it was somewhere in my abdomen but we never found it again, so I, you, so your best guess you is that it's out of out? you. Not that we know of. Oh no! It's probably yeah. out. I'm, of I'm sure it's out, and if it's not, that maybe you know, <laughs> it's baffling to me because it's years ago. So yeah, I'm sure it's gone now. <laughs> yeah, my uh, well, swallowed a battery in the same fashion. Swall I swallowed a battery in the same fashion, and that wasn't that wasn't very fun. What were you actually doing when you swallowed it though? I was in. I was at my grandparents. Bad things happen at my grandparents' house, apparently. <laughs> I can tell. But anyway, I was at my grandparents' house. You don't house, need no child proofing. And my, and my sister. My, no, actually, this battery was out in my sister's room. It was from one of her old toys. It was from one of her old, you know, little wind-up dolls and all this. And mm -hmm. yeah, and me, I was just like, I was just like, I was like, huh. And me, I just grabbed the battery and just put it in my mouth and just, you know, like, started walking down the hallway like I had a cigar in my mouth, like, yeah, see, yeah, oh, yeah, see. So that's how it got to your mouth. Yeah, well, and then and then all of a sudden, <laughs> yeah, I was just laying down in the bed, and then all of a sudden, um, I'm laying there on the bed in the bedroom I was staying in at my grandparents, and then all of a sudden, my sister gets a smart idea to come in, and she just starts banging on the door. <laughs> and me, I come up real fast, and before I know it, gulp. Mm, like a slim gym. Yeah. Next thing yeah, you know. Next thing, you know, next thing you know, I start. I, I I don't realize what's happened. I think I I start thinking to myself. Well, maybe I spit it out. Maybe it didn't go down. And then I look around all around the room. It's nowhere that, to be found. And then all of a sudden, I realize, oh my god, I just swallowed a battery. <laughs> and my sister and my sister, she's like, she's like looking at me like, what the heck is wrong with him? And I tell her, I'm like, Ashley, Ashley, I swallowed a battery. And she just starts laughing. <laughs> she just starts laughing. She's like, <laughs> yeah, so "Why odd. did you eat a battery? Why did you eat a battery for?" I'm like, "Ashley, I didn't mean to. You scared me." And she's like, "You <laughs> ate a battery. You ate a battery." <laughs> it's odd that you and I share these things in common because we both swallowed something odd, and I actually have a burn too that I forgot about. I actually have a webbed thumb and burn, where a cousin of mine closed it in a stove. While she was cooking one day, oh no! And I was apparently real little because I don't remember this. Apparently, I was in a walker or something, and they just closed it in there. And now one hand's webbed and the other one's not. So yeah, it's it's so funny though that we both have weird burns and weird swallowing stories. Oh lord! But you know, <laughs> uh, you both swallow. Whoa! Uh -huh. uh, in that sense, I guess. Yeah, I, had to say, I guess. You all left it open. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah, we did leave it open ended. I mean, he has to chime in every now and again. But <laughs> pretty soon we're going to find out what strange things have happened to Jesse because Nate and I have been talking about it already. Oh, yeah. That's two down, one to go. But of course, if Jesse doesn't want to talk about it, he can, he can, he can, you know, draw Well, that's the, the funny the thing. I, I, I can honestly say I've never truly swallowed anything I wasn't supposed to swallow. Okay. I could say I have. I haven't really done anything to the point where it hurt me. And if it should have hurt me, I didn't get hurt. So, but everything else that's put me in the hospital has been actually something I was born with. Oh, no. So, once again, that doesn't really factor into what y'all are talking about. The only thing I could say that would be my fault of being putting myself in the hospital for a broken bone was my smart ass in the first grade thought it'd be, oh, it's cold outside. I could wear gloves and climb on the monkey bars. Sounds like a great idea. Oh, that sounds amazing, don't it? <laughs> Let me tell you something. Well, that way your hands don't stick to them. It's exactly. Cold. And Triple dog dare It'd you. be different if, uh, if it had, like, nowadays the gloves have that rubber on it. Some. Yeah, so most well, almost all of them now. You can gloves now that have like touch parts yeah. on them where you can use your fingers yeah. and your cell phones and tablets. Yeah. yeah. Well, if they would have had that, 
in first grade, probably would have been okay. But for kid gloves, nah, those things are so soft. It's softer than a baby's boom. Yeah. But that's what threw me. <laughs> so here I am. I'm I'm now like for you all that are around this area, y'all know of Oak Elementary School. There's the kid side of the playground and then there's like the bigger kid side of the playground. Mm-hmm. What's on the bigger side of the playground? Remember we're not from here. Yeah. That's and why I was, are that's why was, <laughs> That's why he was doing a shout out to <laughs> everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, there's two sides. And uh well, the big kid side, the monkey bars, no joke, is probably about ten feet off the ground. Mm-hmm. About that. Nah I scratch that. You're little. Uh I'd say Seven eight, yeah, seven eight, somewhere mm-hmm. in there, and so I fell. Uh, you know, glove slip. It's cold out. What and did you break? I broke my wrist. Seems like you would have broke something other than your wrist because you're. It's how I out. landed. See, I've mm. I, I was taught at a real young age on how to climb fences. So for the most part, I know how to fall and roll. Well, in this case, since I knew I wasn't as high as my normal fence jumping, I didn't have to do all the rolling. So, immediately I put, you know, my hands down. I should have rolled, but, Mm -hmm. you know, didn't think that. Immediately stopped myself and broke my right wrist. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. It's usually your right, mine was my left. That's really weird. (laughs) But everything else that's been broken because of born with issues, left side. Hmm. All right, one more quick topic. Nate, strangest feeling you've ever had? Strangest feeling I've ever had. Physical, inanimate, whatever. Well, strangest feeling I've ever had is, hmm, probably, well, if you want to, uh, if you want to talk about, you know, just uh, you know, time I felt, you know, the most, you know, just it was. I mean, okay, I'm stra- talking inanimate, animate, anything, physical pain, odd, anything. Okay, well, I mean, if you want me to go ahead and start, the, I'll go ahead and start with mine. Well, well if you want to go off, so I go. So on. you know what I'm talking about? Okay, yeah, go on. Uh, my main one I want to talk about is actually came out of a surgery in 2003, and when they woke me up and I was, you know, on the the recovery table, I actually felt like my lungs had collapsed, and that's probably the oddest feeling I'll ever go through in my life because it was like this big rock was on my chest and I couldn't, you know, I couldn't breathe, and I just was panting heavily trying to. <laughs> you were panting. Well, I mean, it's like a dog, you know. So you know, I was basically trying to figure out why I couldn't breathe and you know what the situation was, and it's immediate panic, and you know that's that was my odd feeling. That's the oddest feeling I've ever been through is the feeling that I couldn't do anything about the mm-hmm. situation I was in. Okay. Me, um, weirdest feeling I've ever had was probably the. It it was right after I had this hor- horrible dream. I mean, it it was a dream that felt so real, and just and literally, I woke up in a sweat. I I, I just the the dream was was me. I was out in the middle of my my yard, my old my old yard at my old house. Well, two ha- three houses ago now. Um, and I was just you know. Tossing the ball up in the air and catching it with my baseball glove. I was an avid baseball player. I, I tr- tried to play baseball and all that. And, well, how it went was I tossed my ball up in the air, and then I missed it one time, and then all of a sudden it hit the ground, and the ground gave way where the ball hit, and it was just an empty black hole, and the ground just gave way, and I started falling. And then eventually I wound up in a place where it was nothing but dark, and I just kept hearing all these screams, all these horrible screams, blood-curdling, just gut-wrenching screams that made you that 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 just stick with you for the rest of your life. And then all of a sudden I'm looking around and I see all these people that I know and all this, and then all of a sudden I wake up, and the feeling I had, I felt like I had someone's hands around my throat. I felt like I had someone's hands around. I, 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 you can believe me if you want, you can believe me if you don't want to, but 
I I felt like I had someone's hands around my throat and I just couldn't breathe. And I and I looked around. There were all the windows were closed and all the doors were closed mm-hmm. and the only thing that was that was in the room was only thing that was in the room that was off kilter was the only thing that was in the room that was off kilter was, r- truthfully, my bed. My bed had shifted while <laughs> I was asleep. I'd 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 squirmed so much in my bed that my bed had shifted. You've been in a struggle, basically. Uh, yeah, and I and I was and you know my bed was at first against the wall, and then next thing you know, I, f- I when I woke up, it was up against. It was not just against the wall, you know, with the headboard against the wall. The headboard was pushed over against the against the other wall. Hmm. And I just I, I, I hadn't felt like anything like that in my entire life. I felt like I felt like something was after me. And they say when you actually land in a dream, if you're falling that's when you're either don't wake up and you've died or you're on the verge of dying. Yeah, and then you may die soon. So be glad you didn't die. Oh uh, yeah. Yet. Yet. <laughs> Jesse, Thank you, you for that vote of confidence about that real quick quick feeling quick feeling really fast um i have to say it's been forever i used to get these real bad fear phobias you know like like you just you feel like for instance you know you know um that's a good example um do y'all ever get the feeling where if you go out of town or you do something that that might be the last time you're in town like yeah you know like I I pro- I might not come back. Yeah. Oh, uh, I used to get that all the time, and then I got out of that fear, out of that phobia. But I used to have this real bad nightmare when I was a kid, and it was it's kind of funny, and I kind of want to do something with this later uh, down the road. But I don't know, we'll see. Um, uh, but it's it's about these aliens, and it, this dream was so realistic. I swore it happened. Uh. It was like they were coming to abduct us, and uh, this was shortly after we moved into the new house. They were coming to abduct us, and we were, um, it is, and there's no way to escape. Like er- almost every dream, they got us, and hmm. then, um, then when I moved to Florida, I haven't. We moved back to Florida, and I haven't had that dream in years. While well, I was in high school, I ended up having this dream again. But this time, you've met Wes. Mm-hmm. Nathan, unfortunately, hasn't met Wes. But as as Sean could tell you, me and Wes were a little, we a little crazy on the crazy side. Nothing bad, like oh my god, fun they do drugs. Rented. It's more like fun times, just running around having fun and not really doing anything stupid, stupid. The only thing I have to say, we've done stupid, stupid, is like for instance, Sean brought this to my attention. I didn't even think about it until he brought it to my attention. We were jumping on the dam. In a windstorm, pretty much. Toward the wind. Yeah, toward the wind. Toward the wind, toward a cliff. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, But that's what made it kind of funny and kind of scary at the same time. Uh, well, anyway. So I had this nightmare when I was in Florida. But what made it weird and ironic, it's same setting, different house, but same scenario. Except this time, me and Wes found a way to hack one of their vehicles. And get away? Well, not even get away. We started using it against them. <laughs> now, I mean, for if, for you guys of my friends that know Wes and me, it totally is something we would do, and it's most likely something that'd just be insane. But could you, Sean, just just tell me? Could you imagine me and Wes yes, getting a hold? Full on, see it happening. And and just could you imagine <laughs> how bad that'd be? <laughs> so, so it started out being a feeling of, of not of, being able to escape, but then ended up being a feeling of accomplishment. Yeah, like you could do anything. Like, screw everything. The sky is the limit, literally. Awesome. Yeah. That's really neat. Yeah. <laughs> that, that is. It that, actually that turned is, you around and made you feel a lot better. That yeah. is awesome. It, like, it, it started off as like a nasty fear. I mean, like to the point where I woke up and I saw this. Do you all remember the Buddy doll? The one that was in Child's Play? No. It's a spin off the one of Child's Play. You mean like my buddy? Yeah. Not and kid sister. Yeah. 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 It's a, it's the spin off of that. Uh, right. Chucky is. Well, I remember one night really quick because this is kind of going the same thing. Okay. Um, one night, um, 
I've had this thing since I was little. I've had it since Florida. Well, one night I saw Chucky on the TV. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Freaked me the heck out. Well, this is when we were having those alien scenarios, when I was having those alien dreams. So I'd wake up to this thing oh, across Lord. the room staring me down, man. You want to talk about a little That's kid? It's uncomfortable. Yeah, I picked that thing up. I don't know how many times I stuck it in the hallway and closed my door. No joke. And then uh, I think it was dad or mom. Why is Buddy in the hall? I'm like, he doesn't like me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you have a reoccurring dream about aliens. I have a reoccurring dream about people robbing me, like breaking into my apartment. Well, where oh, you Lord. live, I yeah. would too. Yeah, probably. Uh, yeah. It's <laughs> ghetto fight. I'd either have that or I'd have those alien dreams again. <laughs> Except yeah. this time it wouldn't be an accomplishment. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well, we've covered a lot of different topics this week. Yeah, well, a few minor topics, and that's what we're gonna go ahead and contact or call our medical mystery tour podcast this week for things that have happened medical to mystery. either people we know or people we've read about, and or things that have happened to us. Yeah. So we hope you maybe enjoyed a little insight into some more things about us as a podcast or us as a group. Uh, it's obvious that you kind of like what we're doing because we've got a lot of views on YouTube, a lot hey, of views yeah. on our iTunes channel. Uh-huh. We have a lot of likes on our Facebook page, so uh-huh. keep trending the gate, great chaos, and that'll make us Epcotic. And remember, I'm the gatekeeper. And don't forget, <laughs> don't forget, don't forget, whenever trouble is in front of you, Trouble's Kung Fu Grip! Nate, <laughs> are you the key master? No, I am not. Sean, are you the key master? <laughs> You're always... <laughs> what was it? You're always the key master. Yes, I'm the key master. I was about to say, man, you want to be Sigourney Weaver? Come on. <laughs> I'd like for Jesse are to be Sigourney Weaver. Master? Huh? <laughs> oh, Lord. Here we go. Are you okay, the okay. All right. <laughs> well... Uh, <laughs> Let's get Sean, Canada. <laughs> Sean said it be- Sean said it the best, so I'll just leave it at that. But thanks for tuning in, guys. And once again, this is Nato Hambone. Sean Duke. Jesse James. And we are signing off. Have peace. a good night. <laughs>